Alright, hello and welcome back to Let's Play yet another No Name Aim game. Today's No Name Aim game is of course Iron Man Stewart Super Off-Road. For whatever reason, my middle school had one of these arcade cabinets, and it was quite the crowd favorite. In fact, it was such a crowd favorite, everyone, it was always crowded all the time. You'd always have those three players playing. So let's, well, I, I, I can't really say jump right in, just because taking forever to select everything. Even even with these up and downs, you still press left and right. Well, okay. Alright, to be fair, that'd be like turning the wheel on a uh, arcade, on the arcade cabinet. So, in this game, you've got an accelerate button, you've got driving left to right controls. I don't know, it's, it's a little... Okay, I think the controls are just mirrored, but considering you just press the you go, press the stick in one direction to turn the one way, and then when you get to the other turn, then you push it in the other way. Like, all you have to do is choose when to alternate which direction. It's not so hard. And also, too, I mean, this game is basically bumper cars, except with monster trucks. Not, not a very hard game. In fact, making the controls even better would probably detract from the game as kids would try to uh, be good actually and show skill so again you've got a basic accelerate and you might have noticed I'm using nitros every now and then that's right this game pioneered nitros not need for speed or anything silly like that or underground racing no uh, nitro was actually pioneered by the um, I don't know monster truck racing association of America headed by then president Iron Man Stewart it's entirely made up, but hey, that sounds like a fiction worthy of a history book. So evidently you can earn extra nitros as like, I started with, I'm assuming 10, and I ended with like a million. So also notable is that as you win, then you get more coin, I mean points, to buy more stuff. Oh, no displayed time, I mean no timer or anything? That's unusually generous. So we could increase the acceleration, or the tires, or the speed, or we could just buy a bunch of nitros. I'm sure we should probably do something else, but those nitros... Why not? We'll go for the cheapy power-up. Oh, whoa. We'll go for two cheap power-ups. There's always kind of interesting games like this where you can upgrade your, um, murder machine. No, it's not a murder machine at least so long as those storks stay out of the road. Then, uh, it's always kind of interesting in games like that where you have to upgrade your, um, player character because you have to, like, ascertain, like, what kind of benefits would help you the most and what, what works best and all that. It's a little tricky. Also, to this game, I mean, the CPU isn't so great. I mean, basically, you could just... Hold down the accelerator and probably outwit the CPU. Oh, well, that was bad. I turned and then I compensated. In fact, the uh, decreased controls served to um, only amplify the funness of the game. Or something. So the game just kind of cycles through um, all of these various, very well thought out, very crafted roads that all kind of look like each other after a while. I wonder if they, like, actually had a person do all of these, or if it was just kind of a random generator, and then they just generated things after a while. Man, can you imagine on the development team, it's like, okay, Steve, and we need you to make, like, 70 tracks. Can you do it? And he's like, yeah, I'll do it this weekend. And then he does it this weekend, and they're like, wow, Steven, you're amazing. Huevos grande. Oh, and then they probably had, like, Chuck, who was an English major, to come up with all of the titles. Ooh, averages. Uh-oh. You lose, you gotta... Oh. Because I thought it was like something where you can just kind of buy your way to victory. Which would be... Well, that's generally frowned upon. Games like this. Also, too, yeah. So, I mean, the more you play, then the more of an advantage you have. And then eventually, that kid with like the best car is just winning every time. It seems like it wouldn't be fun, but at the same time, I mean, there's, like, so much 
craziness going along, and there's like so much bull cow just floating around that this game, oh okay, also too, this game is really meant for like playing with people, because like I was saying about a couple minutes ago, oh jeez, it's terrible. The um, CPUs, well okay, the CPUs aren't going to give you much trouble, but like you play with human players, and then all of a sudden it's sort of the same, but then you've got human players jostling and driving you, because this was like three people with arcade wheels all like squashed right up next to each other. I mean, you look at arcades nowadays, and it's like the um, all of the ones that are like cars and racing, they've got their own nice little sit down cabinet, and you've got your own steering wheel, and like everything's to yourself. It's like you're actually in your own car. This game would kind of be like if you had. Th to you and two of your best buds, you all tried to pack into a clown car and just race that. That would be more like what this game is. So you're like right next to each other, you're like jostling and jiving for the best. Oh, oh, I see. So you players can play as the red, blue, or yellow cars, but there's always an omnipresent silver car. Well, not too surprisingly, that's Iron Man Stewart's car. Nice little touch. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Music reminiscent of the Dawn fan race, which I'm sure is reminiscent of various American folk tunes, for what that's worth. Oh gosh. One awesome thing about this game <laughs> is just how much everything like jumps and bumps and jives. And then you've got Turbo, which basically shoots you off a ramp every time you use it. Oh gosh. That's terrible, I did the same dumb thing. But yeah, I mean, you look at your car and you're just flying everywhere, giant hills. It's the physics in this game, that's that's amazing. For this game. Oh, I wonder if you can cheat. So we did that, now let's cheat. You, you know there had to have been some kid like trying this in arcades and everyone's just kind of punching him and it's like, don't do that, Billy. Oh, I don't I don't think cheating's working. Cheaters never prosper. It, it must be programmed something where you have to pass through the checkpoints. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> oh, did it just bounce me back? Like it will not let me go through. I I think I'm just imagining things. Honestly, this game is not deep. This game is just like you and a bunch of friends driving monster trucks, crashing and ramming and bashing each other. It is a little weird in that you've got like this buy your way to the top sort of aspect to it, and it kind of ultimately favors like just one kid coming in and dominating it over and over again. But at the same time, I mean, I can see the logic behind that because then you've got the one kid and he's like, he constantly has to defend his place as top kid, so he has to keep on putting quarters in, and so. It's, it's just kind of weird that, like, you would sacrifice competitiveness just for, like, so much, obviously, monetary greed. But otherwise, I mean, this this game, it's a fun romp, and I'm sure you've seen it, like, back in the day. It's, it's a hard arcade cabinet to miss. It's like three steering wheels all just on one cabinet. Oh, look at that blue car. He's, he's so nice. He's making, he's accelerating me for me. Oh, I see. You start out with twice as many nitros as the CPU players. Just to kind of lure you in. Maybe I should have just bought, like, all nitros. Seems like it would make the game way more fun. <laughs> oh, man. Fun times. Well, on that note, this cat's got a scat.